Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here and I am back again with another creative cow tutorial and in our ongoing look at learning Avid's Media Composer and Symphony, I thought I would continue our look at the Marquee Title Tool since we only just very much scratched the surface of what you can do inside it. In this lesson, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about how you're going to create some drop shadows around your text. I'm going to show you how you can create a stroke around your text and then I'm going to show you what I teased a little bit in the previous tutorial I'm going to show you how in Marquee you can create 3D extruded titles. That's right. You don't need any third-party plugins or applications to create extruded text inside of Marquee. Okay, short introduction here. Let's just get into Symphony and let's get started. Okay, so let's Alt-Tab into Symphony. Obviously, Command-Tab for all of my Mac friends out there. We already have just our basic timeline with our one shot in it created for our previous tutorial. What we're going to do is we're going to navigate up to clip. I'm going to come down to new title. Of course, I'm going to be prompted which title tool do I want to use. We're, of course, going to select marquee. What we're going to do now is we're going to, first of all, like I say that I always do, I'm going to turn on my safe action, safe title here. Let's create a new block of text. Again, we'll just call this BMXing like we always do here, no problem. We're going to switch back to the edit tool. I'm not really sure why they call it the edit tool because like I said in the previous tutorial, I always refer to it as the selection tool because that's pretty much what it's referred to as in any other, you know, whether it's a nonlinear editing application, compositing application. So I'm going to attempt to refer to it by its proper name of the edit tool. You may hear me slip back to calling it the selection tool, but that's okay. So what we're going to do again, we're just going to adjust our bounding box all the way out here. And what we're going to do is adjust the size of our text. Now, of course, I need to switch to my favorite font here, which of course is Impact. Just hit Enter there. And let's increase the size a little bit more here. Very cool. And let's talk about the first thing that I said that we were going to do, which is to get in and to create a drop shadow around our text. Now, you remember in the standard title tool, what we actually had was a little uh, window in the lower right-hand corner of the title tool that we could get in and punch in the value of the drop shadow that we want to add. Things are a little bit different here. Now, what we're going to do is we're actually going to do this over here in the Quick Titles Properties window. And you're going to see that we actually have three sections in here to work with. We have the first section, which is the main surface. Now, let's talk about these. And obviously, we're going to get to Drop Shadow, which is second in just a second. But let's talk about the first one first, which is to enable the main surface. Now, right now, the main surface is enabled. If I disable it, the title is just simply going to disappear. What we actually have the ability to do from here is to do things like adjust the master opacity, like such. What we can also do is adjust the opacity of just the main surface. Now, why would you want to adjust the master opacity versus the main surface? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn on drop shadow for just a second here, just so that you can see how this works. If I come up here and I adjust the master opacity, we're just going to drag it all the way down, everything disappears. But if I come up and I adjust just the opacity of the main surface, not of everything, I'm now left with just the drop shadow. Very interesting and, and pretty much opens the door to a whole new bunch of possibilities. Now what I also like inside of the Quick Titles Properties window is the fact that I can get in and I can enable lighting if I wanted to. Now as soon as I enable lighting, the first question that you're probably thinking to yourself is, well, well, where do I actually find these lights? Well, the lights are actually located, again, right over here inside of our toolbar. There we go. It's the light tool right there. And as soon as I select it, we now have a light right here that we can actually take and move around our text. And we can actually animate this. Now, I'm going to get into animating in a later lesson, but you'll see that we can get in and adjust this however we want. What we also have the ability to do, you'll see right now I have the light. The light is called light one, and it's just a circle. But I can right click on that, and I can add a light. I can delete a light. I can enable lights, disable them, but most importantly, I can come down to the light type and say, well, this is actually a spotlight. You see, we can get in and have the spotlight go wherever we want it to. What I'm going to do here is just right click and I'm going to set the light type here back to be local. Now, for what we're doing, I'm actually going to come back here for a second. Let's just use the selection tool again. I'm just going to select the text. I'm just going to disable lighting just for the purposes of, of keeping the process moving along here. Because uh, we're going to get back to lighting in just a second. What I'm going to do is I also have the ability to enable a gradient. And you'll see that I can do the mapping by local. I can do it by a container. Or I can do it by a reflection, just like such. Now, in most cases, you're probably going to be sticking to one of two things. Local, which means the gradient is going to be applied to each character 
in the text you've typed out, or what you're going to do is have it as a container, basically meaning your bounding box, the container here, is how the gradient is going to go. And you'll see that we can do a gradient from left to right. You can do it up and down. You can also do it as a circular gradient. Very, very cool. And you can even get in and you can tint it as well. Now, of course, we can get in and we can adjust this gradient to be whatever color we wanted it to be. I could get in and say, okay, well, let's adjust our brightness here. And we can really make this, well, maybe we want it to sort of be, I don't know, greenish. Sure, why not? I'll just say, okay. And there we go. You'll see getting in and creating, you know, customized gradients. Very simple inside a marquee. Now, I said that we we're going to talk about creating drop shadows as well. And you'll see, obviously, the next option was to create a drop shadow. Now, what we can do here with our drop shadow, again, is we can adjust the opacity all the way up. Now, what I'm going to do is just turn the gradient off here, just because it's a little bit difficult to see what's going on with the drop shadow with that gradient turned on. Now, you'll see again, like I said, what we can do is we can get in and we can adjust the opacity as strong as we want the drop shadow to be or as uh, transparent as we want it to be. In most cases, I like to have mine pretty uh, solid. What we can also do is obviously adjust the offset where it's going to be. But most importantly for me, I'm just going to undo what I just did here and put that back at one, is I like to adjust the softness because for me, that's what really makes the drop shadow. Very nice. And of course, we can also get in and do it the old-fashioned way, much like in the standard title tool. Very cool. And what's also kind of cool is that you'll see as I move it, it actually locks into certain places, up, down, sort of left and right. There we go. Very cool. Now, for me, like I said, I'm just going to position it roughly about there. And last but certainly not least, I can obviously also get in and adjust this color to be whatever I wanted to. But in most cases, a drop shadow is a nice standard black color, just like that. So you can see, adding a drop shadow, very simple. If I don't want that drop shadow there, I can simply turn it off or turn it back on whenever I want. Now, if I want to switch things back to the default, very easy to do. All I need to do is come down to the little boxes right beside each one of the parameters, simply click on them, and it's going to set everything back to its default parameter. Now, next option we have right down here is called the edge type. Now, I'm going to enable the edge type. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn off the drop shadow here because I don't need to see it for right now. What we're going to do is we're going to adjust the edge color because right now it's set to white. A little bit difficult to see. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set that to red and you'll see that I can come up and I can adjust the edge type to be whatever I want. Now, in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop that down and I'm going to select something like a bevel. And you'll see now that with the bevel selected, I now have this edge around my text that we can obviously get in once I have it selected. And I can adjust the size of that however thick I want it to be. But there's actually something else going on here as well. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to reset this back and I'm going to turn off the edge properties. Because what I want to do is I want to talk about creating some extruded text. Now, this is really where the edge properties are going to come into play. Let's talk about creating some extruded text inside a marquee. And I want to talk about how exceptionally complicated it is. Because as you're about to see, it's probably one of the most complex things that you're going to do. And, it's, and if you can't tell the sarcasm in my voice when I'm saying this, uh, you're really in for a big shock. Because creating extruded text inside a marquee doesn't require any tricks, doesn't require anything special. It's actually kind of hidden away. And if you don't know what you're looking for, you're definitely going to miss it. And what we're going to do is we're going to navigate right down here to Effect. And you're going to see right now I have the Edge type set to be Bevel, much like I do up here in the Edge Properties. And I have the size set to 0. But right below that, most importantly, I have the Extrude Depth set to be Nothing. Well, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to take the Extrude Depth and I'm just going to drag it out. And you'll see as soon as I do that BMXing starts to change here inside of the actual main marquee window. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up and I'm going to turn the edge properties back on. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to turn red off here because red is a little bit hard to see. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to enable lighting here. And you'll see what I can actually do here is I can come in and I'm going to create a flat border here. But what I'm going to do is with my light, I'm just going to reposition my light. And you'll see that I can adjust the light however I want here. But what I want to do here is I'm just going to show this to you. What I'm going to do is just turn the background off for a second here. And I think I'm just going to reset everything here. Just because it's a little bit easier to see once I have things reset. Let's actually just delete this. And let's create a new title here. And just select our text. We'll just type in B, whoops, BMXing, just like such. We're going to take that. Of course, our font's going to be Impact, just like such. Just the bounding box. So it's easier to create this extruded text if you haven't been messing around with a whole bunch of other stuff first. There we go. Okay. 
So what we're going to do is create BMXing, and let's come in and let's extrude this. We're just going to extrude it out like such. And we're going to come up and we're going to change the edge properties. And I'm just going to set the, uh, st the edge type here to be a flat border, just like such. And I'm going to enable lighting on the edges. You'll see just like that. And we're going to enable lighting on the main surface itself. And now this is where things really start to stand out. You'll see now that I can actually see the extrusion on BMX. And it's a little bit hard to see from this angle here. I'm just going to drag the bounding box down here. Now, why is that? Well, it's because I'm looking at it straight on. But you'll remember that I can actually come in and I can adjust the rotation of the text here just like that. Now, at any point, I can rotate this to, you know, maybe be right about there. And I think what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to adjust this edge color just to be a little bit darker here. And what I can do at any time is I can come in and say, well, let's see what type of borders I can do. I could do a bevel if I wanted to. Very nice. I could do a bevel ridge. You'll see that I can get in and pretty much adjust this however I want with the simple click of a mouse. This is probably the biggest and best feature inside of Marquee, and really, as far as titling goes, inside of just about any nonlinear editing application I can think of. Tell me one nonlinear editing application where you can create 3D extruded text right from within the title tool, literally get in and make adjustments with the click of a mouse, you know, in seconds, instead of, you know, getting out, exporting, you know, clips, rendering things out, importing them back in, and having to go through all that. Like I said, very simple to do with a click of a mouse, and of course you can get in, and you can make adjustments to this at any time. If I want to rotate this, you know, I'm pretty happy with the way this looks. Let's just rotate it back around. Very nice. You know what? I'm kind of not happy with that main surface color. Well, you know what? Why don't we adjust it? What I'm going to do is I'm just going to come back up here. We'll just set this to be, you know, uh, I think I like the first one here, the bevel. Very nice. Don't like that main color? Maybe we'll make it red. Very nice. Why don't we just rotate this a little bit to see what's going on here? Very cool. Now, of course, what I can also do is with my light, if I just want to move that across the text, we can do that as well. So I hope this lesson has shown you three very cool things that you can do inside a marquee. Not only creating simple drop shadows and simple stroke effects, but creating very cool extruded 3D text with a few clicks of a mouse. And like I said, I challenge you to show me any application that can create 3D extruded titles as quickly as marquee can right from within your non-linear editing application. So if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.